Hello, I'm Atuba George. Now I'm so glad to be bringing God's words to you this new week. Praise God. Now we are in the month of April and the Spirit of God has said to us that this month He's taking us to a different level. He's taking us to another level. Now another level of what? Another level of work with Him. Another level of instruction. So the kind of instructions you'll be receiving this month, it's higher, praise God. And that's why it's important. The Lord has laid in my heart to share some thoughts with us beginning from this week. And I pray that the Spirit of God will guide us and bring forth His truth in our hearts. But before we go into the broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? And as we bless God concerning this, I expect a miracle to happen to you. Praise God. So are you ready? Make these declarations with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I demand today my daily bread. I receive it right now. In Jesus' name, Amen. Praise God. And Father, we honor you for this broadcast. Thank you, Lord, for everyone listening to the sound of my voice. I declare right now that burdens are being lifted from their lives. Yokes are being destroyed right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, because as your word comes forth, healings, healings are taking place in their bodies. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray wherever anyone listening and watching needs a miracle right now. Holy Spirit, grant them speedily. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now it's been in my heart to share with you what I have titled, Character in Believing character in believing now this is important because sometimes you hear believers you know they they talk and then they say things like god knows my heart you know they most times people use that as an excuse for misbehaving or being childish so they try to portray that god knows that my intentions were right even though it is not sin now there are times yes that people will misunderstand you. But as a child of God, one thing that you are supposed to work on in your life, because see, the whole process of being a believer, the whole process of working with God, now you can't be a believer without working with God. If you say you're a believer and you don't have a walk with God that is uh, tangible, that is real, then you're truly not a believer. Because, you know, that's exactly what the Bible says, faith without works is dead. So your works is what people see. They don't see your faith. So your faith before people is demonstrated in the works that you do. Now, what does it mean, works? It means physical actions, physical decisions that you take. It is supposed to tell that you have faith. So if you believe in God, if you believe in Jesus Christ, there are physical activities that will be happening in your life that someone who is a believer, seeing it, will like, this guy, I think this guy is a believer. If someone who's not a believer, like, this guy looks like one of those bunch of Christian people. You understand what I'm saying? Now, not be, by you saying, I'm a believer, or I, I believe in Jesus, or I'm born again. No. There are things people would see that will make them think that way. You remember the disciples. They, they saw them doing stuff and they were wondering, call these men. They were they didn't, they were they are unlearned men. They 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 don't know that much. But how come they speak like this? And then they now maybe someone reminded them, have you guys forgotten they were walking with Jesus? Said, oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That that explains it. That explains. Do you see that? Now every child of god must have physical things that you do it's your way of living that's 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 how you live that's why i said 
If you don't have a walk with God, then you're truly not a believer. If you can't, if you can't point out your walk with God, your walk with God will produce testimony. See, that's how these things work. So now, I'm going to be sharing with you on character in believing. Character in believing. Now, let's go to Romans chapter 5. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Romans chapter 5. I pray this word will really, really be a blessing to you. Romans chapter 5 from verse 1. It says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace. Note this by whom also by who by jesus christ that's by the holy spirit now when you say what the word christ you just know he's talking about the holy spirit so by whom also we have access by faith into this grace what grace is he talking about you'll see it shortly now he says we have access by the holy spirit into this grace now it says, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So there is such a thing as hope, the glory of God that we hope to enjoy, the glory of God that we hope to, to live in, that we hope to receive, to walk in. So there is the glory of God and then we have this hope. So he says here that, that wherein we stand and rejoice in hope, of the glory of God. Now look at verse 3. That's where we're really going to. And not only so. Meaning we're not only rejoicing in the hope of the glory of God. He says. But we glory in tribulation also. Now sometimes these words. People don't, don't pay close attention. Now when you see the word tribulation. I bet most people don't. It's not a word you want to even um dissect or go look into it's it's you don't want to hear tribulation no so that's a part of christianity i don't like why can't everything just be smooth why can't everything just be i mean if, if i believe in jesus Christ, why can't things just be working for me now watch this it says but we glory in tribulation also what are tribulations tribulation is not just someone trying to kill you because you belong to jesus christ nah see now there is the the thing associated with tribulation so now why did paul say we glory in tribulation also why why would someone glory in tribulation is it one of those things he's trying to say you know how you don't say um, you know you know you know some 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 well we'll talk about all those things when when someone just i don't want to say things are bad you know but look you know what even though i don't have food I glorify God I glorify God now that's not what he's talking about listen there is a place for tribulation in the life of a believer and now what is tribulation tribulation simply means challenges challenges see also we say troubles I want to say trouble you want to now really give it a class but challenges anything that poses itself as a challenge to you it's tribulation. Now, look at what he's saying. Why do we glory in tribulation? Watch this. It says, we glory in tribulation also. No win. No win. This is why we glory in tribulation. No win. That tribulation worketh patience. Tribulation challenges, produces patience. Challenges produces patience. Now watch. It says, tribulation worketh patience. And patience experience. Now, I want to read the, the New King James. The New King James says, Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. Now, patience is a big word also. But if you don't break these things down, you won't understand. So, there is, I think I've done a series on patience before. Even in this series, we'll get into it. 
Now, the kind, the class of patients he's talking about is the staying power of patients. So, tribulation makes you stay. Tribulations proves your staying power. See, so New King James used the word perseverance. Persevere. Hold on. Don't just give up like that. That's what challenges come to do. If you give up, now you remember Jesus gave the parable of the sower. And then he said there are those by the wayside. There are those whom Satan comes immediately and takes the word away. That one, you, you, they, you heard, they heard the word, oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. But in no time, they, as you turn your back on them, <laughs> hey, guys, so what are we talking about? Yes, we, you know, you, you'll be wondering, did I just preach to this guy? Praise <laughs> God. Yeah, there are people like that. There are people you share, I mean, things with them. Look, this is the reason why God wants you to be well. And like, wow, wow. The moment you turn your back, you know, uh -huh, um, they just change. What happened? Satan came immediately and stole the word. Now, there are those who are sto sown on stony ground. That one, he said, because they have no roots in themselves. When persecution comes for the word's sake, they get offended and they go. Now, you see, if you get offended when challenges start coming, it means your faith is not built yet. Someone say, oh, now that I'm in Christ, uh, everything is supposed to function smoothly. And some people have it that way, you know. They got born again. That moment you got born again, it looks like everything. Just say, like, ah, Father, I wish I can just eat jollof rice and fried plantain. You just said it casually. And then the next thing, someone calls you up and says, ah, what, what's going on now? Come over to my house now. Yeah, when last did you visit me? Like, mm, okay, I'm actually around your area. Oh, ah, ah, come over. And then you go there and you serve jollof rice and plantain. And like, whoa. Uh, do you know I just asked God this? You know, so there, are, there, are, there is that stage for some. Everything was just working. It looked like God was so near you. And then after that season, challenges began to come. Now, what is the challenge coming to do to test if you've got root in yourself? To test if you've got root in yourself. Now, he says that challenges produces character. That's what the New King James says. P Perseverance produces character. Now, how is character formed? Character is formed when you do something consistently. It's like character, you can say character and discipline is the same thing. When you do something consistently in a certain way, in no time, you will get accustomed to doing things that way. Now, now you get to that point where everybody just knows that I, I, I know what he's going to do. Why would they know that? Because you have been consistent in acting in that manner. Now watch this. Challenges come and they produce um, patience or perseverance. Patience now produces in you character. Character. Old King James says experience. Now what does character do? Character produces hope. Character produces hope. So now, when you, the moment you got born again and you start having a real walk with God, get ready for challenges. Why? Is it the devil? It's not always the devil. You see, God Himself, the moment He starts, it, it's, you see, Life itself, the moment you start moving, the moment you start moving in any direction in life, guess what? I mean, physically now, the moment you start moving, guess the first thing you're going to encounter? You're going to encounter the, the contrary wind. So, it's like things are still until you started moving. The moment you started moving, something is trying to hold you back. Even the wind is trying to hold you back. You see? Now, you will determine then that, okay, this is the direction I'm supposed to be going. And because this is the direction I'm going, it will determine the amount of trust or the amount of force you have to apply in that direction. Because most times you're going to be going against the, the usual. I said, this happens to 
everyone even if the wind direction is not in that way you will still encounter that contrary wind are you getting what i'm saying so it's it is not just satan take satan out of the equation you will still have challenges that's the truth and that's one thing you must come to terms with in life you will never escape challenges because the purpose of challenges is not to cast you down no 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 it is to do something it is to build you praise god i'm going to stop here today and i want you to take this home the reason for challenges in your life it's to build you but you would need the right character to face those challenges and win so we're going to continue tomorrow i just pray for you right now i pray the hand of the lord moves mightily on you and the godly seed that is in you it is now overflowing into your mind into your body into your actions and decisions that i pray that christ truly will be formed in you in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ i pray today lord every expectation of your heart the lord grant it speedily in jesus mighty name amen Man, praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, remember this. God loves you. In Jesus' name.